All right, it's time for the sh talk. Well, let's talk about the real sh <laughs> That's absolutely insane. It takes one hour to take poop water and turn it into clean water. Clean water. My mind is kind of I've... blown. It makes basically chlorine out of salt water. Correct. By itself. By itself. are at the Head Hunter headquarters right here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And the reason we brought you here is because it's a really important part of our build. We want to introduce you guys to Paul and Case. You guys are going to have to do your Hello. own title. <laughs> I'm going to say CEO so you don't say janitor. Okay, I won't say janitor. <laughs> I'm the janitor. Yeah. You're the janitor. Yeah, right. No, you have like a fancy title. Yeah. Give it uh, to us. Director of Design and Innovation. So guys are going to show us around and we should probably say well, why we're here. Exactly, let's back up a little bit. So we do have quite a bit of equipment that we're yes. getting from Headhunter. On very important our build. equipment for your yes. new build. Yeah, as yes. we just told Everybody everyone. Everybody needs it. Yeah, yeah. very important <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Sorry, there's gonna be a lot of those jokes hey, we, coming. We have a product for every asshole, yeah. let's see. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Oh, yes. When you got this going on right here, there's gonna be a lot of shit jokes coming. Yeah. Sorry. Well, let's, um, Yes. Let's get started. So as you guys know, we've got six cabins and seven heads on our 75 footer, which is kind of unheard of. I feel like that's a lot. Have you guys ever heard of so many heads on the 75 we, footer? The more the better. <laughs> yeah, we love it. <laughs> we, do, we do have a You dedic- might be a little biased. Yeah. yeah, a little <laughs> but yeah. it is, yeah. I think you need an extra one. Yeah. Yeah. A pilot house or something? Yeah, yeah. We've, got, we've got a day head, oh, which okay. was a big thing on our list. Yeah. And you know, obviously we have six cabins total. So that's seven heads. And that's a lot of hmm. to deal with. It was a big thing for us. We were pretty adamant to have uh, like water black treatment. water treatment. If you guys don't know what that is, just stay with us and we will explain. So there and were all these different components. Well, initially we only were thinking of black water treatment, but then talking to Mark, um, which uh, we haven't really introduced yet. Hey Mark, how's it going? Good morning. Good morning, Rico. How are you? Good morning, no, good, good evening for us. <laughs> good evening. Yeah, okay. We'll just get started here. Yeah. Mark basically um, ditched us to go fishing. Yeah. But yes. it is Friday afternoon and it's 90, I don't know, seven degrees out, so right. I can't really blame him. I miss standing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyways, after talking to you guys um, from Headhunter, we're actually considering adding the gray water capacity to it as well, since it's a explore yard with over 5,000 nautical mile range. We just thought it might be a good idea to add that in, mm-hmm. like right away from the get-go. You guys have a complete package system from one manufacturer. Mm-hmm. What do we have here? Like somebody lost uh, some a bet and had some money. It was a good party last night. This is a headhunter head. We're by flush on the pantyhose and the quarters. We're showing there's no moving parts inside the toilet. Um, this means there's nothing to break on the discharge side, so no one ever has to get dirty. People come to the show 30 years later and they still have the same head on board, and we, we give a five-year warranty on every toilet. We were walking through one of the boat shows, and there they were standing, flushing down these penny hose, and as there you guys know, we've worked on a lot of different boats, and this sold us. That's absolutely insane. And we were like, okay, we gotta have that. To add to our black water treatment, we have to have this. So Not that we any, encourage anybody to flush down any of these hose, things. Yeah. But if but. anybody ever spent time on board, especially on charter vessels, where people are really unfamiliar with how sensitive the system can be, mm-hmm. and people use a lot of toilet paper, they flush things down the toilet that they shouldn't, and it is a real shit show for the crew. So Paul, your dad started this company. So Headhunter started, yes, 1981. Started out as just a marine plumbing service company. So your dad saw like head on the problems that people were facing. Well, that- yeah, yeah. And they had the idea of like, let's make our own system mm-hmm. that's different and unique. That's how they started. They developed this at flush with a water jet macerator. Mm-hmm. Macerates the waste, sends it over a siphon break and gravity is down into your holding tank. And from this, they actually developed water pressure systems, water pumps, 
to be able to flush the toilet. So that's how the package started growing Got that it. Headhunter offers. When they made the first Royal Flush, it worked great, but it didn't look so good. So it was only popular on retrofit market, not so much on the new you build OEMs. You mean like the, the interior designers weren't the thrilled? The interior designers weren't <laughs> thrilled with <laughs> the way it looked. But the captains and the crew loved the way it worked. In the early 90s, we invested in some tooling in a one-piece, real sleek looking toilet. And after that was done, we had a nice looking toilet that worked great. And then the interior designer started specifying it on new builds, you know, uh, all the big boat mm -hmm. builders in the United States. And we started growing from there. So you guys are a global company then? We export all over the world. A lot of people don't realize that we don't just do yacht market, we have other markets too. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, you guys do RVs as well? We do RVs, a higher a end. Yep, market. you see the high end RV builders will come to a boat show to look for quality equipment. They don't oh, want the cheap RV well, stuff. Sense. Interesting. I never yeah. thought about that. Yep. I always thought yep. all the way around a little bit, but that yeah. makes sense. This is your model. We have this one, right? Yeah. yeah. The more compact. That was one of the things that is, as much as we could fit seven toilets, we had to fit them. So we have a compact model, but I think it's still okay. You want to jump up there? Standard yeah. <laughs> household. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go check out some toilets. This is our toilet department. They all get assembled and then tested here. How do they get tested? And here they get hooked up. This is the inlet supply, toilet supply. Oh, just to make sure that all yeah. the pumps yeah. everything's, and everything's running. working. We, we check the three different um, flushes. There are three flushes. Yeah. So oh. one touch is a regular flush. Two touches, a quick flush. Three flushes is a flush without rim feed. So if you want to empty the bowl. Imagine you guys use clean water for all this. Yes. <laughs> no one sits here and tests it out. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to have a lot of these boxes coming to us. What's been the craziest thing that you've heard people flush down the toilet? Or has Back been found? in the 80s, it was everybody throwing away their pot if they were getting oh, yeah. boarded. Um, <laughs> I can see that. Um, so with these toilets, that's uh, not an issue anymore. Then, no. right? So you mean like a, a bag of cocaine yeah, would have been, yeah. would have been yeah, safe? Yeah, yeah, things yeah, were different yeah, back then yeah. in the early Miami 80s. in the 80s, yeah. I'm sure. Just a quick question. You said uh, then it's gravity fed into the holding tank, right? Yeah. What if um, for some reason the holding tank happens to be not below the level of the, the head? Are the lifter pumps, you can actually pump it up into the... Yeah, we, we have um, discharge pumps like our Tortuga. You know, a little compact lift station, you come in here and then shoot it. Like sometimes you have a toilet that's real far away from the main holding tank. Yep. It comes in a lift station, shoots it down to the so holding tank. So this is a completely self-contained yep. lift station? It's got the pump in it. It's got the float control. So is everything. that something we're going to have? Yeah, yeah there's, that's on board. Oh, so it, we have yeah. that. Okay. We have one of these. So okay. then we had to use it, I think, for the... For the, for the master, um, I think. For the, yeah, for the master hatch, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What's this underneath it? It looks massive. That's an example of a very large diaphragm pump, you know, in some industrial applications. We have a pump similar to the Tortuga, which is what you have, I believe. It's more compact, very reliable. We had a separate pot product we were buying and we couldn't buy enough of them because our customers wanted them. So we decided to redesign it and make it better as best we could. So these mm. are the discharge pumps we have for gray and black water tanks? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, probably, it's, tran probably, right? it's transferring the sewage from your gray and black tanks into the treatment system. Oh, got it. Okay. But it's but also responsible for pumping overboard or no? Well, you probably have, you have the option to go either to the treatment system or to oh, overboard. overboard, right? Yeah. And yeah. then the treatment system will have its own discharge pump built mm -hmm. into it. Got it, got it. Okay, that makes sense. And the treatment system discharge pump is also a diaphragm pump like this No, one? it's no. different. It's a centrifugal type pump. Well, here's an example here. That pump for, world, for you me? guys are going to lose me eventually. That's, <laughs> there's a lot of pumps in our boat. Yeah, it's the macerator pump. There's the discharge pump. Oh, got it, okay. These are the level senders. These are the first two stages of the treatment. That's the third, final stage, this chlorine contact chamber. This kind of systems is what blows me away is when I go like, when somebody decided that they want to be a brain surgeon or build pumps. Like I'm such a different person. I would never be like, I want to build the best pumps in the world. Like yeah, this is just mind blowing. But you I have to have such a different engineering It won't happen, yeah. right? It started like you said, with a, you know, like, you hey, how, like can there was make, a gap in the how can we make the heads better? And then it yeah. um, kind of trickled yeah. down you, to everything it, else. It's fundamental, you know, my dad always said this, you know, your customer has a problem, find a way to solve it. Yeah. And there's a business. The treatment plant is what we're going to have on board is something similar to this, right? It's Good. similar to this, but your tanks will be lower. It's a low profile unit. It's the same unit as that. This is just arranged differently because some people will have space below and mm -hmm. they want that and then some people want a small footprint where it's stacked on, on top of each other. When we're out there I'll show you guys yours. The biggest thing which I think a lot of people 
don't really understand is the black water and the gray water, what happens to it when you really are cruising. So a lot of areas like Bahamas, it goes overboard, nobody thinks about it. Nice that you don't have to think about it, but as a responsible boat owner, it would be very nice if a clean water is going overboard. And for us, this was very important. So the way this works is, please explain. How the system actually yeah. works, the basic function is, well, you bring the sewage into the system, it's getting macerated and chlorinated. You make your own chlorine. You make our own chlorine. Out of salt water. It's out of salt water. It's oxidizing the organic matter and killing the fecal coliform bacteria. And then that becomes... And, and then there's a cross-flow filtration system built into the treatment system, which is reducing the total suspended solids further and further. It's getting oxidized and basically it's almost like burning it up. Mm -hmm. And then the final stage is it goes through a carbon filter, which helps remove any residual chlorine that's left, which is very minimal, before discharge overboard. The trick in the yachting industry, the marine industry, is to design a complex machine to go on a boat that has, requires minimal maintenance. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. easy mm -hmm. for an operator yeah. to use. So once trip. we decided to build an Explorer yacht, it was a whole different level of, okay, we have to have this. And now, not just for the black water. So for those that don't know, black water is your poop water, and gray water is Where anything comes from the toilet is black water. Correct. Yeah, and gray water is all your showers, your sinks, and all of that. Dishwasher, whatever. Exactly. The black water was always important, but then now the gray water for it being an explorer yacht, now more and more remote areas are getting really, really serious about discharge of gray water. And there are areas in the world that if you have the system in place and you can prove it and it's been certified, you can actually discharge overboard instead of keeping it in a tank. So there's still some areas in the world that you cannot do anything overboard. Doesn't matter. You cannot Zero just, discharge. Like, you cannot mm -hmm. just pour a glass of water in the water. But this was a big thing because I felt like the more and more places, Europe is getting this way, a lot of marinas are getting this way, and having the system is huge for being able to cruise around yep. the world yep. and also as a future for this boat as yep. we're going forward, right. the more and more places yep. are getting yep. really, really strict. I was going to say your system that you're getting complies with the latest and most stringent international standards. So you got and the latest and greatest. And I know it's a fluent process. <laughs> um, how long does the process of going through the treatment plant take? If you can put a time frame on it, I don't know how that would work, but... Well, we size them by the capacity per day. So yes. like yours is 600 gallons per day. And a lot of that depends on, you know, the hydraulic loading. Yeah. That's the... Oh, you're asking like if you like, put a gallon say, like, of I, I'll flush the water. I'll flush the toilet. How long? One flush? An, an hour. hour. Okay. That's but obviously capacity is a lot higher right. so that, than one flush, but um, it takes about an yeah. hour to be processed. Yeah. Right. It takes one hour to take poop water and turn it into clean water. Clean water. All right. Let's go see how it's done. So where are we? So this is the area where the treatment systems start being made. It comes from engineering and it comes here. We get cut files and those get sent into our cutting area. We have a laser cutter, we have a CNC router, and we have a water jet. Oh, hi, hi. Good, good. Oh, you have a oh, nice, it's nice in, here. in here. I know. That's our logo. Yeah. I know. We're cutting. Oh, we're, look at this. He's, he's yeah. laser cutting something for you right oh, there. No way. Yeah. What? I, kinda, I paused it so we could get some footage. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. look at that. As Paul knows, I'm a kiss ass. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty freaking cool. Are these tools expensive? Because I'd like to have one for at home. They make small ones. They find yeah. expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they make desktop ones. In general, normally, what do you do, use this machine for? We use them for tags. Uh, there'll be all kinds of sorts of, sorts of things that we do. So, so all the custom labels, labels, custom tags, tag labels, like yeah. all that yeah. stuff. So you, yeah. you can make everything in house. Yeah. You don't you don't really rely on any kind of third party. No. Yeah. yeah that's amazing. Oh, you got a fun job. Yes, I'll be I doing do. this all day. Oh, I know. It's what the else greatest. Can I make? Yeah. I love it. I <laughs> love he has the best job for birthday parties for sure. Like yeah. Yeah. every time you want to bring something custom to somebody, it's yes. like oh, I do some overtime tonight. Oh no, and I and I have. I have. Some of the other things we cut on here, we cut gaskets um, for the pumps, oh, all sorts of things. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks Love for it. showing it to us. Thank Let's you very much. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, we need to get that. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. That's a CNC machine that cuts aluminum, plastic, or, or machines parts. We've done 3D cuts with it. 
those 3D cuts of like foam and stuff, and that's actually how we built the mold for the hot tub. We just filled the largest CNC machine in South America. Oh, really? Yeah, it was at, at the um, Schaefer's factory. I mean, pretty that's much cool. the size, it's the size of, of, like, of this, half of this warehouse. Wow. That thing is crazy. Yeah. We use that, we cut a 3D foam to make the hot tub. This is a water jet where we cut steel, stainless steel. Oh. Really thick steel. We, we can cut up to probably four inches. Wow. So I think that's what every guy's like dream to like manufacture things, engineering things, and using these machines because it's like, that's cool. Yeah, look at this face. I, I'd like to come in on the weekend here and just yeah. be like, okay. <laughs> What can we do? Let's what can do some we cut? posters. Let's do some, you know, posters. whatever. Let's, let's do something. <laughs> this is a welding department, and our treatment systems are put together here. The plates get cut out, they come here. Got we got it. two welders, and they're all certified. We can appreciate welding since uh, we've got steel and aluminum, and those welders, same thing, certified and everything. So we've yeah. learned a lot about welding what's right, what's wrong, and, you know, it's uh, definitely dear to our hearts at this point. Yeah. This building is a lot bigger than it looks from yeah. outside. <laughs> this is the paint department, sanding booth, and then we have a big uh, paint booth here. Oh yeah. Oh, wow, it's really big actually. So any tanks we have, we get done for the treatment plants or the frames, we have a sandblaster out back. They go to that sandblaster, they come here, they get finished. We want a really good mill finish up with the sandblaster, so the coatings adhere really well. So you're really self-contained. I mean, you do everything in-house. Yeah, most things we do here, yes. It what's, is hard to what's, find. What's going on here? Is that the mixer? Yeah. Keep the, the paint liquid? Yeah, the, this stays on. The paint's always being mixed. That way it doesn't uh, start to wow. come together. Stuff that The stuff that makes you happy and fascinates you just makes me laugh. <laughs> Big American flag. It is hard to find a company now that does so much in house. And it's, it's true. just it it warms my heart. Things we're proud to be an American land. manufacturer, definitely. Yeah, we're proud of you guys. Because I know it is a disappearing species. Yeah. So, so hopefully like, it's coming back. Like my dad always said, he wants to start a website like Amazon, which is called notmadeinchina.com. Not made in China. Yeah. <laughs> not made in China.com, I think would work. So everything comes in here. The assembly is put together, we put together all the treatment systems. Okay, so this is treatment plant assembly assembly okay got it. and pipe fitting depending yes. upon what like that's a lift station right there that's getting uh, put together you have one of those so that's anything what we saw that gets shoulder. assembled usually comes into this section that that big rack they were building that's gonna come over here and they're gonna put the nano filters on it where we go from here testing I like that testing. Go to testing so this is your size treatment plant oh and, really yeah this is this same size wow. you guys got. This is in testing right now. So it's running. Uh, yeah, it's running, and they're going through all the parameters, make sure everything's running oh, correctly before it goes Oh, I see what you're saying. It's side out. by side. Yeah. Instead of staff. Instead of, instead of these being up here, you know, it all depends on the space available on the yacht. One question I did have, and I forgot to ask earlier, if somebody flushes something through the toilet, which is not supposed to go in there, great that it goes through the toilet, but is there a strainer somewhere? Yes, I'll show you. There's another device that's part of your system. Yeah. And I'll, I'll show you before we leave. But it catches it and makes it easy to remove. Perfect. Oh. Love so it. that's in the engine room, or where would it be? I It'll don't be on know. the suction side of your transfer pump, like a big basket strainer. Ah. To remove a yeah, lid, and it's clear and see through. So if somebody dropped the ring into the toilet and it went down, a they would be able to get it out. A big thing of earring. baby wipes. You know, baby yeah. wipes are a problem because they're not yeah. paper, they're plastic. Yep. Yeah. And they don't decompose. Yeah. So this um, panel is also part of the system, right? Yes. Yeah, and so it's distributing power to all the devices on the treatment system. It's controlling their function. It's got the circuit protection built in. And all of these panels and like all these components, you all guys made in house. Made, yes, yes. Put this all, all this together in house. What we have here is our distribution panel for all our test voltages. We can simulate any voltage frequency in the world. Oh. So we have you know three phase, wow. 50 hertz, single phase, 50 hertz, three phase, high voltage, 60 hertz. Three phase low voltage 60 hertz and 230 volt single phase 60 hertz. Where is so, that at in the world? 
So in the United States, US? on some like really? yep, like larger equipment, you know, you get into oh, a five horsepower, yeah, okay. ten horsepower motor, you're gonna have to go into a higher voltage. You definitely need at least 208, huh? Yeah, here the in pump. the states, yeah, 208 three phase is popular. You know, in Europe, the 380 three yep. phase is popular. Yep. You, know, you can use smaller wires with a higher voltage. But we have to make our all, all our own power so that we can do the burn-in test on the, really you know, test the system, it. make sure it all works. Because yeah. you don't want to ship it all the way to Turkey and then the Turks go, hey, it don't work. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. We here. tested it and it worked. <laughs> all right. I'm looking at this and it's starting to feel like we're going to have a lot of big boxes coming in from We're going to have uh, a lot Hunter. of professional looking equipment on board, which I'm excited about. Well, <laughs> we're about to go to Turkey and I think we get to see all the boxes already there. This is the control panel area. So this is an, an example of a typical control panel. Um, for a wastewater treatment system. Its job is to receive the incoming power and distribute it to all the main devices for the sewage treatment system and control their function and operation. So this is the main control board where you program it, set it up, gives you information on the status of the system. This particular customer had two transfer pumps, you know, an A and a B pump. As a backup uh, kind of? Yep, wow. yeah, duplex system. So this is the inside of the panel. These are the motor controllers. They provide circuit protection for all the main AC power devices. These are the contactors, the relays, power supplies. You know, when the customer gets this, it's all put together. They don't have to figure it all out on their own, and it'll come with a wiring diagram, you know, number. And so the shipyard electricians just have to come in and follow the numbers in the attach, wiring attach, diagram. Attach, 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 and yeah. that's it. Do the pumps have to be primed? Yeah, there's part of a commissioning process, mm -hmm. you know. First, if it's a three-phase boat, you got to check the rotation, make sure they're spinning oh, yeah. the right way. <laughs> they spin the right way. And get them primed up. You know, that's another service that... We offer, you know, mm -hmm. our own technicians will go out to the builders and do the commissioning, get it up and running. Mm -hmm. Most builders take advantage of it because they want somebody to kind of guarantee that it's installed sure it's properly well. and it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the customer will pay us to go and do the commissioning, yeah. you know, before they receive the boat from the yard. That's a big thing with us, you know, if we have sales reps, we want to make sure they're technically astute enough to troubleshoot mm -hmm. and, and help the customers. <laughs> All right, you're going to be famous on TV. Hi. <laughs> what is your job description? Oh, What's your title? I'm a soldier. <laughs> you're, you're the most stylish one I've ever met. I just wanted to tell you that. Yeah. They're just walking by, I'm like, you look so good doing it. So, yep. nice meeting you. Well, this is just a burn-in for the autochlores. It simulates a load on the for the power supplies. You know, like this is a power supply for an autochlore. Turns AC power into DC, which you okay. need for the cell. They get burned in, you know, they, they run under load to make sure that you know all the electronics have been assembled properly. Here. Simu is, simulated. Yeah, yeah, this is like a burn-in bench. Like a testing. Yeah. yeah, it's common when we do electronics. You want to make sure you run them for a while, make sure there's yeah. no problems. Well, at least you know it's working when, when it leaves the yeah. facility. It's the most important thing. Yeah. So this I think that's how we're able to give the the so long the long warranty. The long yeah. warranty. So yeah. this is Fabian. He's he assembles our control panels. Hey, how are you? That's his daughter who you just met. Oh, oh. wow, cool. Okay. Family. There's yeah. family all over this place. Yeah. Nice. yeah. There's yeah. husbands and wives and sisters and brothers. And That's yeah. amazing. I yeah. love that. Very neat work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For all the geeks out there now, like, is it, um, are there regulations you guys have to follow? Like, how does it work? Very strict regulations. Okay. So I just wanted to say is that, you know, you have a, a certified approved system by the IMO and the Coast Guard that certifies that it treats the sewage to the standard that they specify. That it and doesn't I, and, destroy you know, the you know, environment, right. the so marine like environment. Right, so like if you get boarded by the Coast Guard or, you know, the Italian version of Coast Guard, mm -hmm. they're going to want to see your certificate. Mm -hmm. So not everybody has that, you know. It's um, so, so you, you're saying there's some companies that actually create uh, treatment systems and it's not certified? Some of them will claim that they are, but they're not. They're not. No. If you're a, a, you know, a boater and you're going shopping for this system, that's going to be one of the things you want to verify is, mm -hmm. like, does it have the proper certifications? Because if you get Show bored and you don't, yeah. then it's great that you is have it. Is the certification it, current or is it expired? Because mm -hmm. what's happened is the international standards have changed over time. So somebody could be selling you a system that meets an old standard, but not the new one. It's no longer, yeah. no longer certified. Right. Is it the same for drinking water? There is no <laughs> regulatory treatment drinking water standards, you know, for building a reverse osmosis water maker. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. So it's yeah. a much stricter yes. rules right. for, for right. doing a, a, a water treatment. Okay, yes. so now back to the treatment process. Does this system need anything from besides having sewage water delivered to it? 
to, clear, to treat it. You need a little bit of seawater so you can make your sodium hypochlorite. It makes basically chlorine out of salt water. Correct. By itself. By itself. I think yeah. most of the people watching this probably right now being like, what? Yeah. So it's really pretty self-contained if you're in a salt water environment. Of course, if right. you're in a lake, that's different. Yep. You will yeah, have to use like household bleach. Household. Mm -hmm. yeah, provided and then for. that, once it's processed, it's not bleach water that's coming out. Your bleach is going to get consumed by oxidized into wastewater. Ah. So it's a very s small residual amount of chlorine Does left it go over. through another and filtration? And then it begins to break down into just salt and water over time. Does it go through another fil filtration before On it On the IMO water? systems, the discharge does come through. A charcoal filter. A charcoal filter, oh, which okay. you can see here. And that removes any residual chlorine. I mean, in reality, it's probably a, a better water than some other drinking water in certain parts <laughs> of the world, right? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. like yeah. some parts of Africa and it's like the yeah. really bad waters. Like this, yeah. this actually would actually be considered drinking water. Yeah. That's incredible. So you guys also make water bottles. Yes. So we have that as well. What do we have? I don't know. You did the you did the you list. Yeah, the aquabox. This, is, you guys this is on you. I don't I don't have the list though, but um, I know already we peaked ahead and we actually have.